Hi, I'm going to show you a great new tool that can significantly speed up the construction of assemblies. Magnetic Mates were introduced in SolidWorks 2017 and allow us to quickly and easily constrain components to each other in an assembly, making it useful for many applications. Here we'll take a look at how we can use this tool to significantly speed up a kitchen layout design. We'll also look at the added benefits of using SolidWorks for automatic creation of cut lists, builds of materials, drawings, and renders. After taking some measurements from site, I've very quickly created a room, which I've placed in an assembly. I've begun my kitchen design by placing a corner cabinet. Let's add some more cabinets. Various styles of cabinet are available to me from my design library. We're going to use a shaker style. Let's open up the unit and take a look in more detail at how the cabinet was constructed. It's a sub-assembly consisting of a carcass, doors, a plinth and a worktop. I've also added in feet, plumb hinges and handles. We could add any other bits of hardware we feel necessary. We've also generated the various sizes that our cabinet is manufactured to using the configuration tool. Before we start using Magnetic Mates, let's take a look at the current method we would use to position a cabinet in our assembly. We make the base of the cabinet coincident with the floor, the back of the cabinet coincident with the wall, and the side of the cabinet coincident with the corner cabinet. It requires a total of three mates and the selection of six different faces. Let's compare that to when we use Magnetic Mates. A little bit of work is required up front. We use the Asset Publisher to construct how our Magnetic Mate will function. It asks us for a ground plane. This is the surface that the cabinet sits on. I've added a plane in my assembly that represents this location. I'll then add two connectors. These will be a reference point where the Magnetic Mates from the various components can connect to each other. I've placed two sketch points in the bottom external corners of the design. I select the points and a face to define the direction and that's it, done. In the assembly, I'll define where the ground plane is. I'll select the floor. I already have a corner cabinet which has a magnetic mate defined inside of it. Now time to bring in my standard cabinets. The ground planes of the cabinet and assembly constrain themselves to each other and the connectors automatically snap to each other. It's just a single click to position my cabinet, much quicker and easier than before. I'll bring several more instances in. It looks good, however, I would like the cabinets to be of different sizes. For this, I simply change the configuration. To complete my kitchen layout, I'll very quickly add end panels, a tool unit, a washing machine, and an oven. Often, for white goods, we can download files from either the manufacturer's website or from sites like 3D Content Central or GrabCAD. Before I move on to my wall units, I'll just adjust one of my cabinets such that the oven sits centrally between the windows. You can see that everything updates really nicely. For my wall units, I create a second ground plane at the height my wall cabinets will sit at. I ensure the ground plane is active. My wall cabinets automatically snap to this plane and to each other. Again, we'll just modify the configurations of the cabinets we wish to use. We're almost done, but there's a problem. We have a cabinet interfering with a box beam in our kitchen. Rather than modifying the cabinet on site, we're going to manufacture the cabinet to include the cutout. Modifying the cabinet at assembly level allows me to constrain the cutout to the box section. And we're done. We're now at the stage where we would like to try and win the business. Our client requires a price, a breakdown of what's included, and visuals of how the kitchen will look. Generating a 2D drawing is easy. Our views are automatically generated. We just need to place them on our sheet. The bill of materials is automatic. I've added a price per unit as a custom property to the components in the assembly. This allows us to show the cost of each item. We can then very quickly calculate a final cost using simple equations inside our bill of materials. It's also worth noting that we can calculate the quantity of our plinth and worktop based on the length rather than the amount of instances within the kitchen assembly. So we know the meterage required. We can use SolidWorks Visualize to create stunning visuals to send to our client with very little additional effort. We simply import our model and paint it. It's easy to experiment with different colors and finishes. Of course, we could spend more time refining the render by adding light and custom materials. However, we are happy with these results. 
We're now ready to send our proposal to our client. Once we've won the job, it's time to produce our manufacturing data. We've used mostly standard cabinets in this job, therefore we have all the relevant drawings and manufacturing data ready to go. However, there was a special cabinet where we removed an area for a box beam. Let's see how we can generate the manufacturing data. I'm going to add additional panels to strengthen where we have removed material. We'll update the cut list to include these panels. From here, we can create drawings of each unique panel as well as industry standard exports for machine in these cabinets. So we've created our kitchen layout extremely quickly and easily complete with manufacturing drawings, accurate cut lists and bills of materials. Not only that, we've used SOLIDWORKS Visualize to create stunning renders so you can impress your client and win their business. If you're not using SOLIDWORKS already, please contact our sales team for a personal demo. Thank you.